and create some some overall visual complexity. Um, the shadow itself, the parameters, um, it's a little chunky. The default uh, shadow parameters, if you open up the shadow map parameters, is a is a is a size, a map size of 512 and a sample range of four. Let's go ahead and bump that up. I, I tend to use a, a double the map size, so 1024, and go to a sample range of six. And that that tends to give me a pretty good result. Um, more often than not, and it's sort of, as you can notice, that it sort of evens it out a bit, um, takes away some of that chunkiness of the shadow. So, um, you know, I think in general terms, we're doing pretty well here. Um, let's, uh, you'll notice the hot spot just from a top view, uh, these two outer rings uh, of the spotlight. So the, the inner ring, the, the brighter blue ring here is the, the hot spot and the outer ring is the fall off ring. And what happens is whatever the multiplier is set at, uh, so in this case, it's one, everything within that inner circle, the, the hot spot ring will uh, appear even. So that'll be all at a multiplier of one. And then what happens is the distance from the inner circle to the outer circle is the fall off the light. So that that's the distance it will take that intensity. So one in this case go down to zero. So it's a very short distance. So uh, what we're going to do is shrink that up a bit. So we're going to scroll up to uh, the spotlight parameters and you can see the hot spot uh, is 43 and the fall off is 45. Like I said, it's pretty short. So let's let's bring it in and, and have a shorter, a smaller hot spot and and then have the, a wider fall off. So you start to see some of that um, that uh, gradation of the light. Here's the render again. Uh, and you can notice that around the edges of the table, because um, right here I'm starting, I'm starting to have the the hot spot focus mostly on the ball, and then have it start to fall off. We could actually go even a little bit further than that, um, and you'll see start you'll see as I start to render here that the sides start to fall off a bit, and it's, again it's adding just some visual complexity um, to to the shot. So you know I'm fairly happy with the main light right now um, or the key light. Um, let's go ahead and, and, you know, just looking at the main light and the key light, I think, you know, I think it, it does, uh, it does it justice from a visual standpoint. You understand that it's a soccer ball. You understand that it's a, a table and you understand it's sitting on it. You understand where the main light's coming from. Um, but you know, you have these bright, bright whites and, uh, you know, the, the, the visual information on the soccer ball as it goes from, from, uh, right to left, uh, falls off dramatically and you have this portion of the soccer ball that goes into complete darkness. So that leads us um, into the second light of the three-point scheme, which is the fill light. So it's going to do just that. It's going to go on the opposite side um, from where the the main light is 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 shining and and fill in some of this visual information uh, on the on the left side of the soccer ball and fill out that shadow a bit. So let's go ahead um, and open this up. And what we're going to do is just um, copy this particular light um, because we have some of the basic parameters already set with the, the with the intensity and that kind of stuff. So we're going to do just copy this light and bring it over to the other side. Um, again, it's it's sort of mirrored across the axis of where the camera is a bit. Um, because it's not going to be nearly, uh, or it's not intended to be nearly as intense uh, as that. So because we copied it, the multiplier is at one, and it's about as close. We're going to do the first thing is back it up a bit, um, and in the left view, bring it down so it's not as steep of an angle, um, and then come over to the multiplier and make it about a, th a third of what the the uh, multiplier on the main light is. So in this case, let's do point three. Um, so the, from an intensity standpoint, um, we're pretty good from the angle positioning. So I, immediately you can see that uh, the, the, the left side of the ball starts to fill in. Um, the shadow brightened up a bit because that light from the main light is affecting that shadow. A couple of things off the bat, I think, in general, um, you know, it's doing what we want it to do. However, it still seems a little bright. I mean, I think we definitely want the main light to be just that, the main source of light in the scene. So the fill light seems a little bright. So let's let's take the intensity down to 0 0.2. Um, and you'll notice here that we're starting to see a shadow um, on the right side of the ball. So 
um, you know, one of the great things about digital lighting is that we can control things that you just can't, uh, quite frankly, can't do in real life. So we can make this um, this fill light uh, uh, not cost shadows, uh, cast shadows. So we're going to go in here, um, and we're just going to turn shadows off. Um, and now that we've lowered the intensity, we'll see what we get here. All right, so the ball starts to darken, darken up a little bit more. The shadow's a little darker, and obviously the shadow's gone. Um, pretty good, I think. It you know the ball the ball's starting to, to fade out a bit uh, on from a from an intensity standpoint. Uh, I think we're doing good there, but we still have a bunch of visual information that's just nice. Definitely have the shadow, um, but at the same time, it's not going to complete darkness, which is good. Um, Let's uh, you know, but we use the same light, so now they're both sort of this yellowy tone. So let's talk about something um, uh, that we discuss in the book as well, which is um, color color shift across an object. So while we have in some an intensity shift, which helps model the ball, let's do a color shift, which will help further bring out the 3D aspects of the soccer ball. So uh, while we use a a warmer tone. Uh, in the main light, in the in the in the fill light, let's use a cooler tone. So let's bring down that yellow and, and bring up the blue a tad. Um, and let's see what the results are there. You know, again, it's slight. I mean, if you want to go overboard just for uh, demonstration purposes, let's make this really blue and make this really yellow. Uh, obviously, not something you'd want to do normally. Um, but again, you start to see the yellow fade over to the blue, and it it helps to bring things out, helps to to shape and mold that that three D object. Um, but again, you know, not necessarily a lighting scheme that we're going for. So let's tone that down a bit on both sides. Um, again, we want it to be slightly noticeable, but not over your head. So great. So it's a little warmer over here. It's a little cooler over here. No shadows. Ball seems to be. Uh, sitting nicely there, um, and I think in general we have the uh, you know two thirds of the three point lighting scene set up just nicely right now. So um, let's talk about uh, the third aspect, the three, the third point in the three points, which is the rim light. Um, and the rim light really isn't causing a whole lot of illumination from from the viewer standpoint, um, but is is really intended to, to create a a nice thin rim of light around the back side of the object and that's really just to punch out the object even more um, so uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to re uh, remember the intensities of my lights here so I know we're working in a point two uh, for the fill and a one for the main and we're just going to shut these turn the multipliers down to zero for now uh, just so we have no light going on, and, and really that allows us to concentrate uh, just on the rim light, which can be a tad difficult at, at first to, to set up the exact positioning. So 